Talk about a flea market find. I got these 10 files in rasp for $8 at the local flea market. These are all American made steel. I'm gonna have a great time restoring these, getting them back to their youth, and I can't wait to start this project. I'm gonna start out by giving them a 24 hour bath with Evaporust. Now this is my very first time using Evaporust, so let's see how it goes. While these are soaking up the suds, let's get to the handles. I'm gonna be making all 10 handles out of scraps. This is actually an epoxy and wood pixelated sculpture I created about a month ago. If you're interested in checking out this video, I'll put a little tag up top for you to check it out. Um, so I have plenty of scraps. I have this and then I also have this epoxy pour. And this is basically a little mold that I just pour every single epoxy project. Whatever I have left over, I just pour that in this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use this little template here to mark off areas that I think would look great as a handle. The epoxy has a lot of different chips and bubbles in certain areas, so kind of arranging these into an orientation where I think it would be best for each handle is definitely what I wanna do. Then it's off to the bandsaw to roughly cut out each shape. And here are my 10 unique handles. Um, actually, there's 11, and I did that because, you know, I might mess up one of them, one might break. It's definitely not that I miscounted. Definitely not. I never miscount. Never. Then it's off to the belt sander where I have the lowest grit I could possibly find. I think this is like 36 grit or something like that. Uh, whatever it is, it feels like boulders are taking chunks out of this wooden epoxy. And here's the next day after a 24 hour soak. Let's take these things out and see what it looks like. I am very impressed. This Evaporust worked really, really well, better than I thought it would. And these things are actually really clean with almost all of the rust removed. Now, the other cool thing about Evaporust and hashtag not sponsored, but you can actually reuse it. So I just ended up pouring it right back into the bottle and I'm gonna reuse it. And next up, it's time to fix some of these bent handles. Some of them have just a crazy bend in it. Who knows what the previous owner was doing, shoving it in rocks and, and using it as a crowbar. I don't know. But um, a little heat and hitting it with a sledgehammer worked surprisingly well, and it's perfectly flat now. Now the Evaporust did great, but there's still areas that I wanna clean up a little bit. There's some, some rust and some grime deep in the file crevices. So I'm just gonna get the wire wheel and I'm gonna wire wheel down every single file. And this worked extremely well. You can see the before and here shortly the after. Look at how clean this file looks. Now that all the files are nice and pretty, it's time to set them aside and work back on those handles. I'm gonna start by sanding them with the orbital sander, and as you can see, I am actually a magician in my off time. Look at these blocks moving here. That is pure magic. Once I'm done with sanding, I'm actually gonna take a 45 degree angle chamfer bit, and I'm going to route all the sides. Now, there's two reasons for this. One, I absolutely hate sanding, and by kind of rounding these sides over, I actually save a ton of time in sanding. And secondly, I just love the way sharp lines and sharp angles look on handles, especially with epoxy. It really just, it throws different light different directions. I think it looks really cool. And here, the magician is at it again. He just made it snow. And once I'm done with the router, it is time to kind of match each handle with the file. I have different size handles and different size files, so I wanna make sure and correlate them um, appropriately. Now I have no idea the proper way of fitting up a file handle. It's really inconvenient that they make these files tapered because drilling a perfectly straight hole just doesn't work, so I end up having to do a bunch of different little tricks and things that I don't wanna show you and bore you with. So let's just say they're all fitted up now and now it's time for my favorite part, which is I'm actually going to put a 45 degree angle cut on 
both sides of every handle. I'm just using my miter gauge here um, and the table saw to do this and I think this really transforms the handles to, to just look a little bit elevated and, and pretty cool. Then once I'm happy with this first test piece here, it's time to knock out the rest. And here's how they look attached to the files. I'm really loving this beveled look on both sides of these handles. I really think it just elevates these things. And in order to not get confused on which handle goes to which file, I'm just gonna label everything for the glue up. And then I put it into this custom clamp that I made to keep them upright and as vertical as possible for the epoxy glue up. Steady hands is not my specialty as you can see here. I tried to be as precise as possible, but that just didn't happen. So I have to wipe away a lot of excess epoxy. Speaking of epoxy, I'm using Moss Epoxy. I love all their epoxy products and you can actually save 10% on any order. Use the code Blake on checkout or check this video's description for a direct link for the 10% off. And this is the next day, everything is cured and I am going to hand sand every handle up to 1000 grit. This took some time, I'm not gonna bore you with that, so here they are sanded down to 1000 grit. And now it's time to start thinking about how I want these things displayed. I know I want these on my pegboard in my workshop, kind of front and center in the workshop. So I'm gonna glue up a piece of poplar in between two pieces of beautiful purple heart. So here I am just kind of milling everything up, throwing it through the table saw and then band saw to get the thickness I want before heading to the planer and smoothing everything out and getting the end thickness that I really want. And all this work has really built up an appetite, so it's time for a little snack. Oh, that's good. I totally sunk this on the first shot. I didn't take 10 to 15 takes of this. Nope, this was the very first shot. You better believe it. All right, once the Purple Heart and Poplar are glued up, I use my little hand plane here to plane one side perfectly flat. And when I was doing this, I found that these shavings were so cool looking. I mean, just check out this little shaving here. It's kind of cool, I wish I could do something with that. And then off camera, I actually glued up this piece of Purple Heart backing. It's kind of a backboard for these files. And then I put it on the table saw with the miter gauge and I did a 45 degree kind of bevel cut on both sides. I think it just kind of looks cool like that. No rhyme or reason, I just thought it looked cool. Then I drilled the 10 holes for the 10 files, took it to the bandsaw, got all those bored out, and then uh, just finished with uh, oil-based finish and did the same to the files and we are almost done. And here they are in all their glory. A whopping $8 at the flea market completely transformed into these beautiful brand new looking files. I can't wait to use these things for years to come. I hope you liked this video. I hope you liked the entire process here. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, this is Blake from BM Sculptures.